All right, everyone, GVG here. And in today's video, we're checking out this new PlayStation uh, God of War video, Shaping the Story, that literally just got released like a few hours ago. I'm a bit late because I was out with the family, but I um, just got back and I saw it, so I thought I'd react to it with you guys on this video. So if you guys enjoy, leave a thumbs up and let's check it out. Oh, hold on, hold on. I have to rewind that because you guys can't see anything yet. Here we go. All right, man. We're coming off of God of War 2018. How do you top that? How do you deliver something that players will love maybe just as much as God of War 2018? So right there guys, um, I wanted to say something, God of War 2018 had a massive impact for all of us because it was different, Kratos looked so different to, from, to the Kratos that we knew from back in the days, as well as he's changed, he's got a son now, he's got a family, you know, everything is just different. I feel like a lot of people could relate to that. How the hell are they gonna make Ragnarok just as good, if not better, than what they previously showcased to us, which is God of War 2018? I don't know, but I'm excited to find out how they're going to achieve that. The pressure who are you? was tremendous. I don't know who this lady is. I've never seen her before. My name is Ariel Angelotti, and I am the Ariel. For narrative. That's a nice My name. name is Richard Gobert. I'm the story lead for God of War Red. Yo, Richard. I'm Jody Kupsko, and I'm Jody. the supervising dialogue designer. It's my job to shape the story along with our writing team, our narrative director. Yo, Eric, Sonny. Angry Voter as well? Damn. Build a team to create that content, um, to own the schedule and realizing that content. I oversee the dialogue production throughout the entire titles. Every line of dialogue that you hear, every human vocalization and effort and grunt, uh, our team touches. Even grunts? Like, <clears throat> what? We are not men. We are more than that. They, these guys really care about how they deliver a game, man. It's crazy. In the story of God of War 2018, we find Kratos seemingly having turned over a new leaf in the Norse lands. He lives a quiet life hidden in the woods with his wife, Faye, and their son, Atreus. And the story starts with them mourning her death. And we learn that she made a final request before she passed away. She wanted them to spread her ashes from the highest peak in all the nine realms. He's scared of being a bad father, a bad influence, and as a result, it's made him an absent father. His greatest fear is that he's passed that evil that's inside of him onto his son. You are too quick to temper. You are rash, insubordinate, and out of control. This will not stand. You will honor your mother and abandon this path you have chosen. It is not too late. They befriend Freya who is an exiled Vanir goddess who used to be married to Odin. They meet Mimir, the self-proclaimed smartest man alive, who serves as their guide and their confidant. And they meet the Holdra brothers, Brock and Sindri, who are world-class weaponsmiths who end up their main source of upgrades and equipment. Holdra brothers? I've never heard of that term before. What does that mean? Somebody please let me know in the comments. Now among the enemies they make are the Aesir gods whose leader is none other than Odin, someone we never meet in God of War 2018, but who casts a very long and dark shadow over the Nine Realms. There are consequences to killing a god! Why? How do you know? How do you know? After many adventures, Kratos and Atreus end up fulfilling Mom's wishes, and over the course of that journey, they find out she more was about so each little. other and about themselves, and finally, find a common ground between them. They become the close family unit that Faye hoped that they would become. Uh-oh. In God of War Ragnarok, we fast forward a few Here years. Here we go. And little Atreus is now a teen, and they're back to hiding out in their home in the woods in Midgard. During the course of the previous game's events, they were forced to kill Odin's grandchildren, Magni and Modi, the sons of Thor. 
Thor does a lot of the lion's share of Odin's dirty work. So that concludes the rumors that Magni, I mean, uh, Modi might come back because they just said they killed him off. I'm not sure whether that meant like for, sh for sure, for sure, like they're dead and gone. There's no possibility for them to come in back. They never said anything like that, but they said they were, they were forced to kill them, which means to me, it just sounds like a conclusion, like they're dead and gone. And as a consequence, he's a very violent, unstable personality. At the end of the last game, they were also forced to kill Balder, the son of Odin and Freya. And that has its own set of consequences. Oh. He was a very powerful chess piece. Oh. Odin, one that Odin is incredibly bitter about losing. Oh. Freya has vowed vengeance against them for the killing of her son. Kratos and Atreus didn't want to kill him. They were friends with Freya. But Balder tried to kill her in front of them, and Kratos had no other option in the moment but to kill him to save Freya's life, even though it meant losing Freya's friendship. I will parade your cold body from every corner of every realm and feed your soul to the vilest filth in hell! That is my promise! He saved your life! He robbed me of everything! Sir son Atreus, you will never understand. <laughs> His death is also foretold to bring about Fimble Winter, which is a brutal three-year winter that is then followed Damn. by an apocalyptic God winter looking good. the Norse gods, the giants, the dwarves, and the elves, and an army, the army of the dead. dead. They're all destined to fight in a battle that basically ends the world. Kratos is understandably worried about his son and what it means for him. You get to go on this journey with how Atreus grows into a young adult and how Kratos grows into his next era in his life and really see kind of the parent that he's striving to be, but the person he's striving to be. I find that tale so incredibly relatable. Same, your boy's a father now. So like having a child just changes you completely from being the hardest man in the world that I am, that I was even, uh, to a softy little, I don't even know how to say it, man. Like having a baby girl, especially, I feel like your heart just is so mellow and so like, it's a tragedy, dude, it's a tragedy. Anything she does, you're just there like, oh! And having a son like Kratos right at the moment, trying to teach him the right way, how to be good, rather than how evil he was back in the past, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard, man. I feel like, of course, they've gone past that stage now because, you know, 2018, they seem to have found their, themselves in sort of like the, like they said, um, equal grounds or equal footing. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see this, man, see the story unfolding, Ragnarok. We had started shooting um, plenty of content before the pandemic hit. In fact, the week before we all went uh, work from home, we were doing a shoot. I remember being on and off that set, running back to the office and having to talk to studio leadership about what was going down and um, how this was going to impact us moving forward. And those were trying times. For us, it was a very unique challenge because we had to bring in actors and we had to record them. And so we had to look at different ways of adapting our typical... I did this kind of stuff before, guys. And, dialogue and it was interesting. So we can continue production. And can't disclose who for so don't ask our players and our fans we had uh, some actors stand in for other characters actors who were already you know who were like core to one of the scenes um, might just be able to play a background character in is this scene to be able to avoid a situation where too many people were, were on set oh. on a given day i'm guessing it's because we of the pandemic avoided compromising the story that we were trying to tell as a result yeah the there we go and these limitations that we had to deal with there were no cinematics that we changed we still have the same characters in them in the final game because it's been five years almost how we shot the they content. were producing the game Our during the pandemic yeah, sunny is a teenage boy and his voice changed dramatically <laughs> several years he's a big time. man now I don't fight anyone. <laughs> he was a baby look at him now he's so tall as well <laughs> even out now how old is he so i wonder it sounds like it took place over a short period of time that that was a unique challenge on this one the 
<laughs> this is cool, man. War is coming. Whether the Norse saga was going to be a trilogy or just two games was something we debated a lot. There were obviously pros and cons. Who is this? So we waited for Corey Barlog to weigh in, and he did, and he said, let's do it in two. The consequence to that is, how do you wrap up this story in one game? And do Ragnarok justice? <sighs> two two Valkyries. And then have the <laughs> at the end of the game, and I wrap just, up yeah. all those loose threads. This game is bigger than what we initially envisioned. There's a lot of important story moments that we needed to cover. There are more characters that we follow the threads of. And ultimately, it ends up feeling big and epic because there is a lot there for people to enjoy. I am very excited for folks to see this final chapter. A lot happens. Uh, <laughs> we put our characters through the ringer, but we also bring them closure and we provide answers to a lot of the questions the first game posed. Just all of the, the new combat that we're doing and the, the new interactions. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff that's happening in this title that I... I Talk to me, baby, about, about combat! We all Talk to me, Jody! Ragnaroks to deal with. And this story is about how you process that, how you own it, and how you make it a part of yourself and grow from it. I mean, we set some stuff up. Um, at the end of last game, there's going to be some consequences this game. We're going to see how things play out between Freya and Kratos. I'm excited. We're see how the evolution of the family relationship continues. You got Brock and Sindri, the dwarves, who are kind of part of your makeshift family now. And there's going to be some other characters that we introduce that may be going to disrupt the balance a little bit. I can't wait until players uh, get their hands on the game or are able to experience how the story unfolds for themselves. We have, I think, an incredibly well-rounded game. Very satisfying combat, beautiful and rich environment. That's, to that's music to my ears, my boy. <laughs> lush and moving soundtrack and soundscape. It's the work of hundreds of very dedicated artists. Ugh, my fingers are like, please, just, 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 just release already. Stop teasing me. They're like, GBG, please just make it happen now. Ah, oh, no, this is hell, man. It's like, what, another 20 days until the game comes out, dude. It's like, oh my gosh, man. Freaking wow, I need this game, dude. I don't even want it. I just need it. <laughs> I need it. We all need it. But yo, guys, that is it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. That was pretty dope. Shaping up the story of God of War Ragnarok. What does the hundred brother means? I never actually heard of that term before. Also, it was really nice to meet all these new, you know, dev team that I hadn't met before, like Ariel, Jody, and Richard, I think it was. And the other lady as well, I forgot her name, but it doesn't matter. Um Guys, that was pretty dope. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, reaction video. Um, my name is GBG. If you guys want to um, assist me watching, you know, God of War Ragnarok when it comes out, I will be doing a 24-hour live stream. Yes, I am literally out of work. No, no, no being your father that day. <laughs> she, if she if she needs me, she's going to be right here. Baby sat right here. <laughs> Just joking. But, yo, I'm going to be doing a 24-hour live stream. And if you guys are around and you guys want to participate in the stream, just come through, man. We'll chill. If you have school, go to school, come back. I'll still be streaming. Literally, release date, midnight, UK time. I'll be streaming that game for 24 hours and then go to sleep. So, uh, yeah, other than that, guys, thank you all so much for checking out the video. Appreciate you all. Leave a comment. Hit that like, subscribe button. And, um, yeah, I'll see you on my next video. Peace.